Hello everyone, welcome back. Another video. Bit different this time. I think I've been teasing this video since my first ever one. So this one's going to be a bit more, I'm going to show of course some knitting, but it's going to be a bit more chatty, deep soul diving, talking about problems. You'll see as I, I go along. Um, but I had mentioned, and I think most of my videos, that I had a bit of an issue with constantly casting on new things, never really finishing anything, or finishing things very slowly because the rate that I was casting on was way quicker than the rate that I was, you know, finishing things. So it just led to <laughs> me having a ridiculous amount of projects. Now I don't know when I was at my worst, I don't know that number. Um, it could be more than when I did start kind of keeping a note of things, but eventually I just kind of realized I, as I was looking for things, I was like, I forgot I cast that on. I should work on that again. And so then being the person that I am with the work that I do and who I just am naturally, I love a good spreadsheet. So I started making one where I just kind of said, this is the project I'm working on and this is where I'm currently at. So I started that in March. Um, it would have been maybe like mid-March or something because start of March I was in Austria for my grandma's birthday and when I came back that whole trip to the airport and flying back was a bit terrifying because that's when you know the whole pandemic was kind of just really starting to hit properly in Europe um, so it was a bit terrifying <laughs> traveling and when I came back I the UK hadn't really said anything yet about lockdown. Um, I think we were about like two weeks away from it, but I contacted uni and said, look, based on what I've seen, I'm gonna be working from home and I can easily do that. Um, and I've been doing that ever since. And I do miss my office, but you know, we gotta do what we can. But, so I think it was obviously when I came back from Austria, um, that at some point I was then like, you know what, let's take the time. We're kind of really anxious about everything that's happening in the world. Let's dive into our knitting and forget about the rest of the world. And that's when I kind of made a record of everything. Um, and <laughs> when I listed out all the projects and looked at everywhere projects could have been hidden, I counted up 26. 26, two six. Six and twenty-six. If any of you speak German. <laughs> um, I could probably say it in a couple of other languages, but let's not get distracted here. We'll have plenty more of that later. But yeah, 26 projects was what I was at. And they were all at varying different stages as I've sort of shown with my videos where I've shown abandoned projects where I really have not made a lot of progress. Um, this is the projects I'm kind of working on where, you know, some of them get worked on more than others. But 26 is, t it's just too many for me. Might not be for you. I know, for example, my mum typically knits one thing, like she starts it, she finishes it, moves on to the next thing. I know that's not for me. And when I kind of started keeping a record of all the projects and I did it monthly, every month, the beginning of the month, I would write out exactly what projects am I still working on, what new things have I cast on and what stage am I at with all of them. And used a nice bit of colour coding to kind of prioritise projects where I was like, well, you're close to finishing this one or, you know, you're knitting this for a friend, get that done sooner. Um, and that sort of helped keep a record of everything which helped with motivation and things like that. And I'm probably, <laughs> I want to share kind of what my experience was with all of that. How I used to knit, how I kind of knit now, how I deal with kind of, it is nice to cast on something new, but it's also nice finishing things. So I kind of want to talk about that. And I also want to share since I started that in March, where I'm at now with 
out of those 26 projects, how many have I finished? Are any of them still ongoing? Things like that. Um, and I have a feeling this video is going to be quite long, so I'm probably going to split it into two parts. Sorry. Especially because there's going to be my usual, like, update on my current projects that will fit in between it. My bad, but that is the way it's going to go. But let's start with something really random. Um, I don't know if you can sort of like see my hair. I just washed it last night relatively late, then was in bed knitting for maybe half an hour to an hour, working on those house pride socks for my friend. And my hair wasn't fully dry by the time I was like, screw it, I'm going to bed, I'm too tired. So I was a bit nervous because it was still, you know, a bit damp and everything, but then I woke up and I was like, I haven't done anything to it. I just washed it and let it dry naturally. I feel like normally when I do that and I don't sleep in between the washing and the properly drying stage, it just looks like a mess, but I I'm living for this mess. I like this. So like, well, we just woke up like this because we did. And enjoy my little hair ramble. I'm having a different tea today. This is not Bird and Blend. It's still very hot. I like my tea quite cold. I know that's probably controversial in opinion, but I'm the one who's like, oh yeah, you're making me a cup of tea? Great. Let it stand there for half an hour and then it'll be good to drink. I didn't used to add milk to black tea. Now I do because it helps cool it down. <laughs> And I also find it makes it much more like cozy and soothing and just comforting and nice. Um, but the tea that I'm drinking is one by the Feel Good Tea Company. Thought I'd quickly show you, um, kind of where my tea came from that I'm drinking today. So it's from the Feel Good Tea Company, which I'm pretty sure um, is based in Dubai, so that's where my parents live. Um, and my dad ordered this for me. I think that was because of my back pain. Could also have just been life. Um, your tea, Riffic. I do like a good pun. Um, but yeah, here they are. Um, so there's quite a few of them. I love that they're in these like test tube, boiling tube things. Super adorable. Um, good variety of different teas. Um, so this is the summer pack for 2020. I'm drinking cherry lips, um, but kiwi fruit punch is probably one of my favourites. But yeah, um, I think this is really cute as well. So this is where you've got the tea bags if you need them. Um, I have a variety of infusers, so I typically don't use them, but I like to keep them and use them to make iced tea because I need so much tea that it can be quite hard um, to get it working with just an infuser. But yes, and in the background, um, I wish I could say this is all of my tea. I am not proud of the storage, but it is what it is. Um, this is just the tea that I'm currently kind of drinking and want to drink. So some of these bird and blend ones haven't even been opened yet. Um, and some of these are um, actually like ones I bought as like proper loose leaf ones as they're not even in any packaging. Um, then just some infusers, my tea timer. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I have a lot more tea than this, but I do tend to go through it relatively quickly if I focus on like one or two teas, but yes, feel good tea company. They do ship internationally. Um, but you might want to check them out. I love their teas. But yeah, so that's the tea I'm drinking today. A nice cherry flavoured kind of black tea. I say kind of, it is cherry flavoured black tea. There is no kind of, that's literally what it is. And the cherry's not too strong, which I'm a fan of. I don't want anything too punchy. I still want it to be like a nice comforting black tea. But it's just got a bit of a cherry flavour to it, which is quite nice. But, let's start with kind of how I used to be with my knitting. Um, 
I started knitting because I was feeling anxious and just not feeling great with the world, my life, everything. I was just a bit miserable last year and my mum was always knitting and we, I sort of touched on this before, but um, I joined my mum and my dad in Oslo and mum was buying wool and I was like, I should get back into knitting. I haven't done it in so long. And it just kind of, the like rate at which I started kind of knitting and the rate at which my time was taken up by knitting like grew exponentially. Like it was insane. It ended up being pretty much the only thing I did, which was bad. Um, it's what I needed to do. Um, but that kind of initial excitement of like, you know, finding the wool, casting on something new, um, and maybe, you know, working through a tricky section of the pattern and being like, ooh, it's so exciting seeing your jump or whatever you're knitting grow. And then you get to kind of a bit that's not as exciting. Not necessarily boring because I don't actually find, you know, if you're doing stockinette stitch on a jumper and you're on the body section and that's all you're doing, knitting in the rounds, so you're just knitting, 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 and it just grows very slowly, especially any of you who follow me on Instagram have seen me complain about the fact that everything I want to cast on is 4-ply 3.5mm needles. It hurts my hands. <laughs> it's so tiny. But it's just stuff, like your knitting grows very slowly with small needles, obviously, and if you're using quite thin yarn. And it's not, I find it very therapeutic when I get to the body to just knit. I don't really have to look as much. I'm getting better and better at being able to knit without looking at my work, which is quite nice because I can actually then watch things I haven't watched before and actually be able to see what's going on instead of constantly just like looking at my knitting. But I just kind of was like, oh, this isn't as fun as what I was doing before, where it was like, you know, checking the pattern, doing increases, you know, like raglan increases. Every time you get to the marker, you know, increase here, knit the raglan stitch, increase again. There was something really exciting that you could always see, ooh, I'm getting close to another marker now, gotta increase, that was exciting. And so then I was like, oh, well, I can cast on something new. Um, and this is where I kind of spent a lot of money on kits by Wall and the Gang, and I have a lot of them. Not so much anymore, I think I'm down to my last. I'm working on one of them, which I shared in my abandoned projects video, which was that like mohair jumper, I think it was called the replay sweater. I think that's the only Wool and the Gang kit I'm currently working on. I've got one from We Are Knitters, but that was really like, I love the jumper, wanted to know how We Are Knitters compares to Wool and the Gang. And I think I've got three other kits from Wool and the Gang I haven't touched. And part of me is like, do I want to knit it? Because it is worked flat. Or I'm not sure I want to do that, could try and adapt them, that could make it interesting. Um, but it was the only thing I really kind of knew. I didn't, I was too new to knitting to really dive deep into it. It terrified me. So the kits were a really good way to get an idea for how to do increases, how a jumper kind of comes together without having an intense pattern that I sort of had to learn how to read and how to use. And eventually that came with time that when I then did read like a proper pattern and the first one I think I ever looked at was the litmus cowl which isn't even that tricky compared to what I do now but it was the first time I'd read a pattern written by someone who you know didn't work for one of these kind of companies and that kind of like started where I am now with not really buying kits anymore um, because I find they're not that challenging the We Are Knitters one is an advanced one, um, which at the time really scared me because I was like, oh no, I don't know how to do lace or any of that. But now when I've looked at it, I'm like, that's not going to be hard. <laughs> um, but I still think the jumper itself is going to be beautiful, so I'm excited to actually get to the lace section. But you start at the bottom of the front piece and the lace is at the top, so it's going to be a while before I get there, especially because I've got so many other projects I'm working on. Um, 
But yeah, so I just got into this habit of, uh, I'm not feeling as excited about this, so let me cast on something new. And I was finishing things relatively quickly, uh, because a lot of the stuff that I was working on was on bigger needles, like 8mm, if not more. And so I was quick to see progress, and even if I was jumping between a variety of projects, I still worked through them quite quickly. But then, I think it's just as I dived more into kind of, you know, indie designers, indie dyed yarn, my progress kind of slowed down because I was moving into projects, you know, that were on 3.5mm needles and were with 4-ply yarn, so it was just, it took a lot longer to see progress with it. And so it also just meant that knitting a jumper took way longer than I was used to. So I was constantly casting on new things because I wanted something new, I wanted something exciting, I wanted to work with the wool I'd just bought. And it just got out of hand. But I, I like the fact that I then sat down and really thought about what projects have I currently got going on and to kind of prioritise them in a way and kind of go, yes, you might not be working on some of these projects for the next month or two, but you'll get to them and you'll give them the time that they deserve. Because it was just hard. With so many projects on, the only way I was able to work with a new pattern or a new yarn was if I just cast on something new because I couldn't finish anything because there was so much left to do with most of them. So then there was this guilt with I haven't, I've bought this yarn, I haven't worked with it and I have yarn in my stash that I bought probably what during the first Yorkshire Yarn Fest in November last year that I still haven't worked with. I've got a project in mind with it, but I haven't gone around to actually knitting it. And that's because I've still got new yarn coming in, because I still buy yarn. And I find new patterns and things, and so it just keeps going and I never make time to knit with that stuff. But now it's getting better, because now that I see what projects I want to focus on, and kind of can focus a bit more, I know I'll get to those eventually. And I have like, within that spreadsheet I have another tab where I also just write all the yarn that's in my stash, what project I've got in mind with it, also now included a section about what needle size the project is so I can kind of prioritise bigger needle projects if I feel like I've got too many with small needles. But... It's just... As sad as it makes me that I don't get that excitement of casting on something new as often, it has helped with br making that excitement when I get to start something new even more exciting. Because there's all this waiting around and you build up this excitement of soon, soon, if you finish this, you've got something new and exciting waiting for you. But at the same time, that's balanced with really enjoying the projects I'm working on. Instead of being like, ugh, I just want to be done with this, I don't want to knit this anymore, I, d I don't want my projects to be like that. I want the excitement to last throughout. And it can, you know, there can be a lot of excitement, the excitement drops a bit, but I still want it to be enjoyable the whole time. So I will always have quite a few projects on the go. I'm never going to be like my mum, knit one finish it, knit another one. I just can't. I need multiple projects, I know that. But I don't need 26! That's just ridiculous. So I'll share some of the ones. So out of those 26, it hurts me to say 26. Um, I'm also going to share some of the projects that I've finished since March. So in some ways this could also be like a, the knitting I finished and did during lockdown can work as both. This isn't in order of how I finish them because sometimes I'll finish something then immediately weave in the ends, block it, be done with it. Sometimes I'll finish something, weave in the ends eventually, eventually get to blocking it or some of them I still haven't blocked. So it's just hard to say when exactly I finished some of them, but they were they were all finished and that's what's important. So the first one I'll share is 
this one here. So this is a framework bralette by Jessie May. Anyone still surprised when my hair lands on everything because that's just long, long hair life. I've been wearing this one a lot because the weather's been incredibly hot. Um, so I wear this to sleep. Um, that's why it looks a bit, bit rough around the edges already. But you can all probably see. Um, we've got a bit of grey in the back. That's because I ran out of the yellow yarn I was using. So the yarn I used for this is from Wool and the Gang. It's the Sugar Baby Alpaca, I'm pretty sure it's called. Um, so it's DK8 yarn like the pattern calls for. But I just had some leftovers from like other projects and things. So I was like, oh, I'll use this. And I thought I had enough. But I think, I don't know if I ever checked my tension with this one. So the gauge could be wrong and therefore that's why that will probably be why I ran out of yarn unless I calculated incorrectly and when I, I was like oh well okay I'll just buy you know one more uh comes in 50 gram balls um I'll just buy one more sold out and they haven't released this color since then I think it's called so yellow um and I've currently been wearing the gray in the back but I can wear it either way I really liked knitting this because it was a bit of a, I remember I cast it on because of the fact I knew I would use up some scrap bits of yarn that I had left. And that was something I quite liked to see something I'd already worked with where I was like, well, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with that to then be able to use it up in a different project where it just works out perfectly. In this case, it didn't because I had to use a different color and if I'd kind of, you know, planned for that. Could have done something really cool where, you know, like the ribbon could have been the gray color or something. And then maybe also the straps, but I'm still happy with it. And it's perfect for what I want to use it for, which is kind of, you know, if it's hot or, and I'm at home. So it's just been perfect for lockdown. Um, as it's gotten hotter to kind of just wear to sleep and you know, if it is really hot, just wear it around my apartment as well. Um, it is 100% alpaca, so it's quite warm. Uh, but for the most part, it's been fine because my apartment gets warm, but it hasn't gotten too hot recently. Or I'm just used to how hot it gets now. Who knows? But that was, I think, actually one of the first ones I finished. And I did block it, and it is way too big for me. Haha, <laughs> ran out of yarn, it's way too big for me, looks like there was a problem with my tension. But it still works for what I use it for. So that was one of the 26 that I had going on before lockdown. And like I said, I do think it was one of the first ones I finished because I got quite far through it. I think I'd reached the point where I'd finished the body, saw I wasn't going to have enough yarn to finish the whole thing and then try to get more the colour I think was called So Yellow um, from the Sugar Baby Alpaca by Wool and the Gang and it was sold out everywhere and I didn't know anyone who used that wool and so I was just like okay cool different colour it has to be then but I'm happy with how it turned out um, it's not like one of those things I've knitted where I'm like oh no it didn't turn out how I wanted now I'm sad I'm just like well whatever it serves a purpose and that's perfect uh the other thing I finished relatively quickly though I was still late with it was a little baby kimono I'll try and insert a picture of it I think I did potentially post one on Instagram um or I just took a picture of it to kind of send to people um but it was a little baby kimono because a friend of mine uh, had a baby during lockdown. I'm so amazed by her that she, you know, went through all of that. Like, pregnancy and childbirth are really hard enough, but then, you know, you've got a pandemic going on. And then, you know, not having a support network available with the whole lockdown thing. She's been absolutely amazing with all of it. But the yarn I used for that was 
from West Yorkshire Spinners. It's the first time I'd knitted with their yarn. Uh, I've bought some more since then. Currently haven't started working with any of them, but I've got some plans. So it was a DK weight yarn. The pattern was one my mum sent me. I think it's available for free online. If I can find it, I'll try and link it below. But I think I had issues at the end when I wanted to check a few things to get access to it. So I don't know if it's still available. But I used a kind of speckled kind of pink purple for the main body and the sleeves were just done in a semi-solid like solid purple. And that was a new thing for me because I was all like oh that will be really cute and then when I got to knitting with the way that it was knitted I was like I don't understand how I'm going to get that to attach because from memory you started I think at the back um, it was worked in one piece but you god I can't even remember now but all I remember is as you were knitting the rows it was kind of you know like working up well kimono cardigan so you know it opens up but so you're knitting front, back, front, and then eventually you have to do the sleeves. And you had to cast on a certain number of stitches for the sleeves. But because I was changing colours, I was like, how do you, how do they combine? Because if I just knit the body and then the sleeves, I'll have to sew them on later. So that was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. I looked it up on YouTube and it was really easy just, you know, to kind of do some when you change the colour instead of just letting that yarn drop just kind of carrying it over just for just that one stitch um, so you can't see that that's happened but it kind of locks it in place and that worked perfectly so I didn't have to seam anything which made me really happy and then I had to crochet a little buttonhole which I'd never done before either I've crocheted a bit before I made my niece a little bunny uh, there is definitely a picture of that on Instagram but that's kind of all the crocheting I've done other than some like cotton rounds to you know wash my face with. So crocheting a buttonhole I was like I don't know how to do that once again just looked online looked on YouTube and it was easy to figure out and sewed on some little buttons that I had and I think it turned out really well and um, there's been pictures online of a little baby wearing it but it's been very cute. That was another thing I finished um, the next thing I'll share, I think I've shared, not all of them, but most of them on Instagram, is my Ursa sweater. So I started this probably in January or February when I was on the train to see my friend Hilary. Um, and I wanted something new <laughs> because I always do. And I had this yarn from We Are Knitters, it's their Marshmallow Petite Wool. And as in like the colour is called Marshmallow. Don't mind me, I'm literally just picking hair off it because like I said it gets everywhere. And I wanted something that was going to be a bit quicker and easier to knit up. Because once again I think I was working, ooh. The next project I'll share I think was the one I was working on I just needed something on bigger needles and I'd wanted an Ursa for quite a while and I love how it's turned out the like texture and the way that the yarn worked with it it's just absolutely beautiful and I had no real issues with it it was really straightforward for the most part the only issue I had from memory was that kind of diagonal stitch pattern that you can see there. The way that it was written in the pattern didn't work for me. It wouldn't have looked the way that it does now where it kind of, you know, like is like a triangle and cascades down. So I kind of just changed it. And it turned out fine. I think it looked really good. Um, sadly, I have not had a chance to wear it because I think ever since I finished it, it was just always too warm. Like this is, with the, <clears throat> pardon me, with the wool it's very warm. Um, so I just, 
I haven't had a chance to wear it sadly, but you know, it will get colder here. I will get use out of it eventually. But that was another thing I finished, and the one I was working on at the same time... Ooh, my giant yarn uh, finished project pile is just about to fall over. Was this Cumulus blouse. Uh, by Petite Knit. That's it. Um, so this yarn is by Mothy and the Squid. It's her Evening Sky lace weight. I think the original pattern asks for like a mohair or something, so it's like really fluffy. But I just used lace weight, held double like she does, so you could also just do it in uh, four ply weight, which I think my mum has done before. Um, but you've just got, you know, raglan increases. It was very simple, very basic, but the most beautiful thing about it is the edging is done in I-cord, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, I didn't have enough yarn to go for the full sleeve, so I kind of just did like, a, I think it's a half sleeve on me. So perfect for me, like I said, I always push my sleeves up, so it works out perfectly. But it was done 3.5? 4? millimeter needles, relatively small, and that's why I needed the Ursa because that was on six, six, seven, something relatively big. Um, I'll link everything below so you can have a look if the pattern interests you if you haven't seen it before. But yeah, I definitely started this, was it this year? Maybe it was this year, but I bought the yarn last year at Christmas, so yeah, it must have been this year because I didn't get back from Austria until like January. But it was a really fun knit and I think I was on the body when I started casting on the Ursa just because I was like, as much as I'm enjoying it, I said, you know, I find the body section quite therapeutic, but I just needed a break from it and not just constantly pick that up. I needed something different, something changing. And the Ursa, because it's cropped, there's very little body knitting that you do and even when you do you still have this bit that runs all the way from the sleeve well I guess it runs down the sleeve and down the body so there's always something exciting happening every round something a bit different even though you get used to it it's still different to just you know knitting every stitch which does mean you have to pay a bit more attention and this is perfect for, you know, sit down, watch something, don't really have to look at my knitting. Um, but that's why I like a variety of different projects. So you get that difference. Different bits of knitting. You know what I mean. But yeah, that's another one that I finished this year during lockdown. Um, I wish I could say I'm mostly through the list. I am not let's talk mm, mm, let's talk about this one because this was a test knit not the first test knit i've ever done because i'd done some beanies some cows i think that was everything but this was the first garment i'd ever done and it was for verity from truly hooked she over the kind of Christmas period was annou had announced that she's got a sweater pattern that she needs test knitters for and she did say she was like if you've never done a sweater in the round or anything it doesn't matter it's fine it's a really nice kind of beginner friendly one and I'd never worked anything in the round yet at this point other than like the litmus cow but like a garment in the round I'd never done it before and it was it's a raglan jumper I'll show it off I think it's called the Georgia sweater, but I'll leave the actual name up below. I don't think it's out yet because it wouldn't really make sense, you know, to release it now when you can't wear it because it's too hot. But it's a raglan jumper and she specifically said that she designed it so it's not as bulky around the kind of like underarms and chest kind of area because a lot of raglan jumpers can be because you've got so many increases there. And so instead she's done fewer of those, so it's a snugger fit around like the upper bust. 
but has done bus starts instead. Um, which was very cool. Um, cool now, and different now that I've done other jumpers, but at the time I was like, yeah, cool, I, those are words I understand, but I don't actually know what you mean. But the sleeves are then done in moss stitch, which is not my favourite, especially when it comes to doing, I think, decreases for the sleeves, because the pattern doesn't always match up, and this was probably the least beginner friendly bit of it. The rest of the jumper was quite easy to follow. It was intense at the time when you kind of work the yoke for it um, because there's a bit of like a, a drop as you can see, like a V almost. So you worked it flat for a little while as you did all the increases before you joined it in the round. And there were so many stitch markers and I had to keep the pattern open and because it was a test knit, there were a few mistakes that kind of people figured out. I was like, how do I know if it's a mistake or if I've made a mistake? How do I know if it's the pattern? And now I'm way better with test knitting with that. So there were a bit of issues with that. And then having to do a, the moss stitch for the sleeves and especially for the first few rounds where you can't really see the stitches yet, that was really tricky. But considering it's my first ever like top down worked in the round kind of sweat I'm really happy with it once again haven't had a chance to wear it because it's just we've been too hot but come autumn time and I think the colour is very autumnal as well I can't remember what wool I used I bought the wool in Austria it's some kind of commercial one it might be Schachenmeier is that what they're called I'll leave a link below um I'm pretty sure it was a merino nylon blend or just merino but it's DK weight um, I really like it because it's not like, like she, like Verity said with the bus starts, um, you definitely don't get too much bulk like in the body and around the bust and everything. Um, I'm just not happy when I look at the like underside of the sleeve because she does say in the pattern that with the decreases it means most, the moss stitch won't always work out because you'll occasionally have a knit stitch next to a knit stitch but I sometimes have it like four knit stitches next to each other and it just doesn't look great even after blocking because it's still you know just obvious but it will still get used it's on the least noticeable bit of the garment anyway because as long as I don't constantly walk around with my arms up in the air don't know why I'd do that anyway but yeah I loved I did love knitting this it was a well, I think if I hadn't done this, I don't know if I would have been able to do all the other things that I then started working in the round. Like, originally, I'd planned on doing the cumulus blouse for ages because my mum made it and I thought it looked really nice. And when I saw the pattern as well, I was like, oh, this looks beautiful. But it scared me because of the whole, like, working the yoke to get, like, the v-neck and working top down. And in the round, I was like, oh, I've never done that before. But this is the perfect place to start. The eye cord's probably the hardest bit if you've never done it before, but this is so simple and so basic. And this Georgia sweater was a bit more intense. Um, not something I would have recommended to a beginner considering I was a beginner when I did it. It's probably more of, still, I think it is a beginner friendly pattern, but more of a, if you've done a jumper in the round before. It's kind of an advanced beginner, intermediate beginner. <laughs> Just getting into the specifics here now. But that was another one that I finished. Um, I think it was also one of the first ones I finished because we were coming to the end of the test ending period, which might have been the end of March. I can't remember now, but I got it done on time and sent in my little bits um, about how it went and how much yarn I used and things like that. So keep an eye out for that pattern if you like it. Um, and I think because the yarn I used was actually quite budget friendly. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I haven't pulled it out in ages since I finished it because like I said, I haven't been able to wear it. And speaking of Verity, um, I have also done a pair of socks using one of her pa patterns. They're called the Ryan socks spelt R-H-I-A-N 
and the yarn I used is by Hayley from Ducky Darlings. Um, I know <laughs> with everything I've always shown in my videos, it looks like my only obsession is the Fibre Fox, and it is a big obsession, but I also have a lot of yarn uh, from Ducky Darlings as well. Um, but here are the socks. So this is her Christmas cheer colour. Uh, my friend Hilary is obsessed with this colour but she wants all the DK weight yarn, so I feel justified in buying the four ply. But I think this was the second pair of socks I'd ever made, which was a bit ambitious because this is also kind of like first lace I'd ever done. And I really like the heel for these because it's, I think she calls it an eye of partridge heel, but it's really just like a slip stitch heel, so it's quite sturdy because of those slip stitches. So from memory, I knitted, started knitting these just before I flew to Austria for Christmas, so I think I'd done maybe, you know, like, the bit of ribbing at the top and like, the first repeat of lace, or maybe even two repeats of lace, and really enjoyed them but did find them a bit more time consuming than the other socks that I was working on, which I finished over Christmas, and that was my first pair. So before I'd even finished my first pair, I was already knitting my second pair of socks. I think I'd finished the first sock of my first pair, but still, um, I feel like I should have just, you know, finished those before starting the second pair. So they were a bit trickier, and I, I will say it was a great introduction to lace. Um, just getting used to yarn overs and decreases and stuff. Which I'd, I'd done... I think I would have done any yarn overs before that yet. Because that's not typically how I do the increases. Though I know some people do. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed these. But then they kind of just sat and I never did anything with them. Um, because I felt like, oh yeah, I know how to do the lace bit now. And I never did anything. I was like, I never finished them, never worked on them. So, I really tried to make an effort to get them done. Because I think they are beautiful. Um, the yarn, but also the pattern and everything. And I've worn them quite a bit already since then. But it's quite cool. I don't know if it will pick up on camera. I don't actually, I don't think I've checked to see if I've actually done it right so that... I don't know, maybe, maybe, but the kind of like lace detail, they kind of look like cables or like faux cables, they all rotate towards this direction, whereas on the other sock, if I hold it up properly, they rotate the other way, so then they're mirror images of each other. So Verity wrote in the pattern that you can do that or you can just work both of them the same and then it doesn't matter. But I really like the idea of them being a mirror image of each other. So I work them differently. And it worked out quite well. I had a few issues in some bits of the pattern. So I had it from one of the sock pattern books that she's written. Uh, my friend Hilary got me that one. And I was making I think the middle size, surprisingly for me. Normally I've got such big feet that I normally have to make the largest one, but I think I did go for the middle one. And some of the instructions didn't make sense based on how many stitches I had. So I had to kind of adapt. Luckily I was able to do that and kind of figure it out, but that was another thing where I was like, that wasn't the easiest thing if you've never knit it before. But I think with the smallest and the largest size there wasn't that issue, it was just there weren't specific instructions for the middle size where you had a different number of stitches and I was like, hello? <laughs> How do I do this? But that's my second pair of socks. Um, I have made more since then. I think it literally is just the two pairs of socks I've made for my friends, which I've sent off. They've got them. They said they're happy with them. They fit really nicely, so I'm glad about that. Um, but one of those, the chalet socks, they, where I was holding Georgie's Plumpy Base Double, they are actually one of the projects that I started at some point, either in March or before March, I think it was in March, 
because I think I bought the yarn during that Yorkshire Yarn Fest. So I must have started at some point at the end of March or something. I can't remember. Um, but that's I've been working on them for a really long time. So I'm glad they're finally with them, though so not weather appropriate. But that is life. But yeah, I'm really happy with these. I think they fit better than the first pair I've ever done. But I need to make a lot more socks because I've got the yarn for it. But yeah, there's another one. What shall we talk about next? Let's, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's really go for some of the wool and gang wool and the gang kits that I finished. So the first one, the first one, the first kit was these. They're called Heartbreaker Shorts. So the yarn for this is made out of recycled denim, I'm pretty sure, which I thought was really cool. That was one of the main reasons I wanted to try and make these, but also because I was interested to see what knitted shorts would be like. Um, they fit, but I don't really like them all that much. I like looking at them. I think they're kind of cool to look at. And it was cool kind of crocheting the tassel and like doing all of it was quite fun. But I'm not sure how much use I'll get out of them. Uh, like everything else that I'm going to share from Well, in the Gang, they all worked flat. Working with this yarn is a bit of a pain. I've got another one that's made in the same yarn but a different colour. It stains your hands so badly. At first, I thought I'd bruised my finger somehow, that maybe I've been wrapping the yarn too tightly and that's why my finger was blue. Literally looked bruised. But it was just because of the fact that the dye was coming off the yarn. Um, and the straight needles that I use are wooden, so they're completely like blue and stained now as well. But it was a fine pattern. There was only one size. So I think they're intended to be much roomier than they are on me. But to be honest, like I said, I don't know how much I'll wear them. Um, because they are quite warm. And I'm like, I don't wear shorts in the winter, even around the house. Maybe I'll do the same thing as what I did for the framework bralette and wear these to sleep. I might need to give them one more wash just to make sure all that excess dye is out. Because I don't want to stain my sheets with it. But it was a cool experience. And you didn't need too much yarn for this, so the kit wasn't expensive at all. And it really was just to test it out. And now I know. Don't think I'll be making any more knitted shorts. Even though I think Sir Jessie May has some, and they're cute, but once again, I'm like, I just don't think I'll wear them, so I'm not gonna make them. So that's one of them. I don't think I've actually counted how many I've finished. Let's share this one next. So this is also made out of that same yarn. I think it's called their Billy Jean yarn. Pretty sure it's still available. Um, I think it goes this way. I think this is the first sweater, one of the first um, sweater patterns I ever, like kits I ever bought from One of the Gang. I've got another one which I finished a long time ago and I'm not embarrassed by it but like one sleeve is tighter than the other and it's just, it, it's not my favourite project, but it was the first one I'd ever finished. I started that one and this one at exactly the same time. And this one just took ages. It's moss stitch, which I'm not a huge fan of knitting. It just kind of hurts really quickly and is not as relaxing. Though I like the aspect of... I'm a continental knitter, so I like bring the yarn forward and back with my left hand. I find that quite nice. But the actual knitting can be really rough on my wrists. But I like this. Once again, I have not worn it because it's too hot. So come autumn time, I think I'm going to have a lot of new clothes to wear. But I did change the pattern up slightly. I think you sew everything together and then pick up stitches to knit the neckline. And 
or maybe you do it all in one. I can't actually remember anymore. But you're meant to fold this over and then sew it together so you have like a thicker collar. I didn't like it. Um, I kind of quickly laid it all down and did like a really rough sew and had a look at what it looked like and I preferred it like this. Uh, same thing with the sleeves. The sleeves were also meant to be folded in. I just didn't like that. I don't think I did it anywhere. No, not even at the bottom. I just liked it the way it is. I think nearly every pattern that Wool and the Gang have, the length always ends up being quite a cropped version. Um, which is fine, but in some ways it's a bit frustrating that some of the like jeans and things I own, like it's just too short in some ways. And now that I know more, I'm like, well, Nina, you could have just made it longer. I had yarn left over, but I just didn't know as much as I do now. I didn't think I'd like this jumper. As soon as I started working with it, when I saw the moss stitch, first time doing moss stitch as well, I was like, I think it's too textured. I think, you know, with the amount the yarn stains and everything, I just didn't like it. And then I sewed it together, blocked it. I was like, just get it finished. You can always, you know, give it to someone else if you really don't like it. But then after I blocked it, it kind of, I don't know, I looked at it and I was like, oh, you are very me. I think I had issues when I was sewing these together. That's the only reason that some of these kits took so long. Finished them really quickly when I bought them last year and then they were just sitting in the bag waiting to be sewn together because I did one and was like, I don't enjoy this. <laughs> I'm getting better at it now. now. Um, if you've watched my latest video, I talked about a new cast on the Duchesne kind of jumper top thing. And spoiler, um, I'm at the stage where I've sewn it together. Um, I still need to do the sne sneeves, <laughs> the sleeves and the neckline. But I've gotten so much better at sewing together that it's not as much of a pain. And when it doesn't look as good, I know what I did wrong and I know how to fix it. So it's kind of like with everything, the more you do it, the better you get. And sometimes the more enjoyable it can be because of that. But considering how this was probably my first proper jumper, I'm quite happy with it. I just would love to be able to wear it. But I need to wait for the weather to cool down. So it will get worn at some point. But that's another one. And I think we've got two more. Let me check my list. I've got a little cheat sheet in front of me so I don't forget any names. So that was called the Julia sweater. And then, oh, I'm so excited to share this one. Look at that bright pop of yellow, which goes really well with what I'm wearing, the t-shirt I'm wearing. All the yellow. This is the Total Eclipse, Eclipse sweater, also Wool in the Gang. They're all gonna be Wool in the Gang from now. Um, it's made out of 100% cotton, which was the first time I'd ever knitted with cotton. Um, when I started this, but I'd also made a blanket for a friend of mine as a, I think it was his graduation present? Viva present? Either way, it was made out of cotton in different colours and made like this beautiful rainbow, but I'd started this beforehand. I remember working on this in Dubai in September when I went to visit my parents. This was, I think, the only knitting project I brought, but then I just... <laughs> was all like, oh, mum, you've shown me beautiful patterns and beautiful yarn, I want to work with yours. So I didn't really get much done of it. And then eventually was just like, Nina, just get this done. This is ridiculous now. Because it had just been sitting around for so long. Um, and in some ways I'm like, well, cotton can be warm when it's hot. But this is really thick. I'm going to put my tea in front of me, otherwise I'm going to forget to drink it if it's constantly behind me. But because this is garter stitch, I don't like garter stitch, I'm going to put it out there. I love the colour of the sweater, I love that it's quite simple and everything, but I wish I had stuck with my gut and not made a garter stitch. As soon as I cast this on and started knitting it, and I saw that it was like, oh, just knit every row. And I was like, but we're not working in the round, that means... It's garter stitch, not stuck in it stitch, and I, I, I sort of wish I'd changed it. Because I'm not a huge fan of all this texture. 
like that's already a problem I sort of had with the other one I showed, the Julia one, with the moss stitch, the amount of texture, but garter stitch is even, it's <sighs> a lot of texture. So I'm not, are you surprised when I say I still haven't worn this because of the weather? I am a broken record, somebody fix me. I'm not sure how much wear I'll get out of it, especially like I said once again it is quite a cropped sweater and especially though it's quite thick and warm. I'm also like I don't really wear cropped sweaters like this that much in winter but I will find use for it. I've made it, I love the colour, I will wear it on a day where I don't feel bright and bubbly and this will make me feel bright and bubbly. But super easy, I think this is the easiest sweater I've ever done because you knit a rectangle for the front, a rectangle for the back. I'm not even sure. Do you have de- no, I think maybe the sleeves did have some decreases, so it's not just straight, like rectangle, rectangle, rectangle combined. But there's no shaping at the neckline, there's no picking up stitches to make a any sort of neckband, there's no ribbing at the bottom of the sweater or the sleeves. And I think when I bought it, perfect timing, and I should have just started it and knitted it immediately. It would have been a great way to start with kind of getting a feel for how, how garments come together. But considering when I did it, I'd already done top down and bottom up sweaters and things like that. This was just really boring <laughs> to knit. And cotton can be a bit hard to work with because as you're knitting, it can kind of split a bit and then all of a sudden you haven't got as neat of a stitch because well half of it's dropped, half of it has the sti next stitch through it and it can just be a bit of a mess and it took a bit of practice to work to get to a point where I could work with it really well. The feel of it, oh, is incredible. So I think I will try my best to get some wear out of it and worst case scenario I have the option, you know, as much as it would kind of hurt unravel it and knit something else with it and knit kind of what I've got in my head now of what I would want it to be because like I said in my last video I've been thinking a lot more about designing and I've got some ideas and if I really don't get wear out of this it would be a shame to waste this yarn because it really is nice and instead you know before I take it apart do some sketches of what I kind of have in mind rip it back um, do some swatching to kind of see how it would all work out and if the texture and stuff works with this yarn and maybe make the yellow sweater that I've actually always wanted. But we'll see. Um, I think with a few of these wool and the gang ones, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happens to them because the patterns are very beginner friendly, but I am very past being a beginner. I never thought I'd actually say that. I have a tendency to be like, oh no, I'm not very good at things. But with this, I'm like, I've seen how much I've improved. And looking back at some things, I'm like, you're just not a beginner anymore. But I remember what it felt like being a beginner. And then, yes, there's another one. <laughs> this is probably my favorite one. This is probably the one that I'm like, I don't want to do anything to it. I love it so much. This is the first of a cardigan. This is called the Delia. Yeah, Delia cardigan. Knitted entirely out of mohair. It's the same yarn that I showed with that red mohair wool in the gang kit. Um, so it's an Aran weight mohair. And it's got long sleeves and the body itself is really, really long. So I think when I wear it, it comes to just above my knees. But it, it sheds so much. I wish it didn't, but that is mohair. I, when was it? I remember working on this last year, like July, August. But I think I'd finished all the panels and bits. All I needed to do was sew it together. And I was just like, no, I don't want to do that. Especially because this one was a bit more tricky to put together because you had to attach like the front panels of the cardigan to the back. The sleeves had to be done in stages because they, and you had to figure out which one was which um, to make sure it would all fit together. 
and I'm relatively proud of my seaming together of this. Um, turned out pretty well. The only thing I wish it did have was an actual kind of like proper panel on the side. Not necessarily with buttons or anything, but I think it is just missing that extra bit of detail to make it look a bit more professional. I haven't blocked it, so I'm hoping it will shed less and will look even better once it's blocked. But the reason I haven't blocked it is, like with my tie Moana shawl, it's just, it's so big. And my towels, which I normally use, just weren't working. But if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen I bought blocking mats finally. I caved, I did it. So I should be able to finally block this and then be able to get some wear out of it. Um, because this is something that I can wear on those days where it's a bit colder, but it's still quite warm. Perfect for some of the walks I go on, just to get out of my house a bit. But this was quite enjoyable. It was tricky at first, because working with the mohair isn't the easiest to be able to see the stitches clearly. So I do have some yarn left over, but because it's Aran weight, I think it's like a 50 gram ball. There's not much to it and I don't know if I can do much with it. Might be able to do a bit of like a border around it myself, but I really do just want to wear it. I also wish I had pockets. Maybe that's what I'll do instead. Knit some pockets, sew that on. <laughs> I'll come back to you next year being like, well, I've done the pocket in a week, but I uh, haven't sewed it on yet, um, stitched it on yet. So, you know, this time next year, maybe we'll be done. I'm kidding, I'm much better with it now. And I guess that's something to kind of quickly sort of go back into now that I've shown some of the projects that I've finished. If I hadn't made that spreadsheet, if I hadn't confronted all the knitting that I kind of started and sort of abandoned occasionally would work on, I focused on each of these. It wasn't, you know, I, I told myself that, well, if I just, you know, knit a little bit every day, it will get there. Like I even have it now with some of the projects I'm working on that I'm trying to focus on. If I just do a couple of rows every few days, I don't have much progress to show. So instead, even though I always want to have quite a few projects, I like the way I've colour coded things to be like some of them, you know, will be yellow, which kind of just means knit knit it when you feel like, when you don't feel like knitting any other project. Then orange is, these are the ones to focus on. And red is like, you should have finished this two months ago. <laughs> I don't think I currently have any in the red area anymore because I've finished off a lot of them. Um, though to be honest, the like house, show your house pride or whatever they're called socks, they really should have been done a long time ago. But I'm cutting myself a bit of slack with that pair of socks because it is quite different knitting for me and I haven't done much of it. So I feel okay about it, but I'd like to get them done as soon as possible. At least one, because then I think I'll have established how to do that kind of stranded color work, sort of stranded color work. Um, and some other things that I'm knitting for other people are things I only just recently started so I'm okay with you focus on them so they're like a yellow category but we're not stressed right now just try and focus them as much on them as much as you can while also finishing off your other bits but so even though other than I think it's just the framework bralette that I've showed which I've actually and the socks the framework bralette and the socks are the main things I've got a lot of use out of. The Cumulus Blouse I've worn a bit as well, um, because it's quite lightweight, because it is, even though it's lace held double, it's just quite open and breathable and airy, which is nice. But I wouldn't have been able to, you know, enjoy those and wear those if I had constantly started casting on new things. Because I reached a point where I was like, oh, well, if I finish something, I can immediately cast on something new. And I, kind of still do that now that when I finish something I'll be like oh we can look into casting on something new but instead of just casting on the next thing I can think of I spend a bit more time looking through my spreadsheet looking at all the things I've got planned and taking the time to really think about which project is going to go well with the others so there's no direct overlap like I know right now I'm not going to cast on another pair of socks because then I won't focus on the socks I need to get finished and 
when it comes to, well, if I'm already working on a lot of jumpers, I shouldn't start another one. But it sort of depends because like, with my shifty sweater, I've now got to separation of sleeves. Haven't worked on it since that vlog from the Yorkshire Yarn Fest because I just, I pushed myself so hard that weekend and now just need quite a long break from it. So it was like a really focused on project and then all of a sudden it became more abandoned than ever. But I will get to it. Um, but so if I have got a project where it was, you know, it's a top down kind of sweater, but I'm up to the body now, then I'm okay with casting on another one. It's just keeping in mind like the needles and how many cables I have for my interchangeable needles. And also just kind of thinking a bit like with something new that I've started, spoiler on my Instagram, um, I'm kind of trying to balance a bit more about having things on bigger needles, having things on smaller needles so I can st still knit when I want to knit, but my hands get a bit of, my wrists get a bit of a break. So I'm much better at thinking and planning now instead of just going, oh, I want to knit this and then starting it. So I guess the last thing I'll talk about with this video, there's still more projects that I haven't shown you, so I'll save that for the next video. But the way I kind of want to finish off this one was, I was so slow at finishing projects because I had so many, which then made me feel like I was a really bad knitter because other people on Instagram and other people I knew were constantly finishing off things. Like the rate at which my mum finishes projects is insane. But then if you kind of, she is a fast knitter and she's a really good knitter, but if you take into consideration that every time she knits, she knits on one thing, she's gonna see progress so much quicker than I will. And so even though I kept telling myself, oh, well, who cares how many projects I have, I'm just gonna knit the way I want to. By sort of stopping myself from just immediately casting on new things, telling myself, no, finish the things that, you're, that you've started, I actually remember the whole knitting process a lot better. I remember when I started, how it was knitting it up, how it felt finishing it off. Like with my Taha Moana shawl, the fact that I, I hope I will always remember, but I definitely now can remember what it felt like starting it, working through it, and how emotional in some ways it was finishing it. And if I've had projects on the go for months and months, some of them, you know, almost a year, you forget, wait, when did I start this? How was, why did I start it? Why did I like it? How did I feel? You just, you forget all of it. And I want to have those memories attached to those things that I've made. And it was just that I also just felt because I was finishing such few things that I was just a really bad knitter. You know, everyone else was finishing things so quickly and I wasn't and I was just like, I thought I did knit quite quickly, why am I not finishing things? And just finally just really reflecting at my knitting behaviour and looking and being honest with myself about all the projects I had going on. It then meant, I was like, well no wonder you're not finishing things. You've got so much on the go. And the amount of projects I had, like the framework bralette, I think it was, and some of the other ones I'm going to show in my next video, um, I'd maybe, you know, done just the ribbing. Or I had, you know, finished projects where all I needed to do was sew them together, but they were just sitting there and weren't, they are were wasting space, they weren't being used. And even though I don't like sewing together as much as I do knitting, the more I do it, the more I start to see how I'm improving in that and how it's still a really important skill to have. And yeah, just to kind of understand that quantity is not always the best. I feel like that's a lot of things in life. Quality is where it's at. Yeah, and I think that's sort of where I want to leave this video. To kind of, all of these projects that I've shown you today, that I'm going to show you in a future video, most of them I would not have finished if I hadn't sat down and kind of did and kind of started this project. I'm going to call it a project. Why not? Um, and so now I actually get to wear these things 
which is funny because uh, once again I will say it's been too hot to wear most of them but it's even just nice to be able to share those things on Instagram and with some of the indie dyed stuff it's even though I don't have a huge platform on Instagram it's still you know there are still people who maybe have never seen indie dyed yarn or didn't know about someone's yarn and then they see pictures and then they go "Ooh, I'm interested in that um because I did have it once someone I follow on Instagram from America was like someone suggests me some indie dyed yarn doesn't I don't care if it's international just throw some recommendations at me and I did and they bought from those people and that makes me really happy especially as you know you kind of, with indie dyers, you can really, with a lot of them, form these really beautiful friendships. And to then be able to say that you could kind of help them out a bit and, you know, send business their way, I think that's an amazing thing. And with any small business, that's part of the reason why I like to kind of mention the things that I've bought. Because, you know, small businesses, it's really just typically one person behind it and who maybe is just doing it as a bit of a side hustle or maybe it's actually their full-time job and especially with the lockdown and everything and wool shows not happening people buying online has been really important for those small businesses so I want to support them you know by buying from them if I can but at the same time it's also important for me to you know expose people I know to the things that I've bought in the hopes that maybe they will as well. Um, and doing the little the little bits you can to help out other people, always important. Um, but yeah, that is everything for today. I think it's still gonna be a long video. I can talk. That's something I've learned a lot over my life. I always have a lot to say. Not always a, uh... once again, that's a lot of quantity not always quality but I hope today was a bit of quality among the quantity and I encourage you take a look you know if you are someone who has multiple projects and maybe you've abandoned some of them have you actually got a proper record of all the ones you're working on because you might be surprised I was I completely forgot about some of them and there's no shame in that there's no shame in having 26 projects on the go I just knew it wasn't good for me and I'll get into how many I kind of would want ideally and what I've been working towards I'll also show how many I've currently got and all of that in my next video along with the last few bits that I've been able to finish um, to kind of round off this how many projects is too many and also kind of sharing all the things I've finished and knitted during the lockdown and that is it I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have, please do give this video a like. Um, please do subscribe to my channel so you can kind of, you know, keep up to date, especially with this video where there will be a part two. You know, you don't want to miss out on that. And check me out on Instagram if you want to kind of just see more kind of regular progress on a lot of my projects. Um, I do post on there relatively regularly and occasionally share things on my stories. So that's a nice way to keep up. And yeah, and if you think anyone else might enjoy listening to me ramble on about my knitting and philosophizing about who I am as a knitter, what kind of knitter I am, you know, it'd be great if you could just let people know that I'm here, ready to be watched and listened to. And that is everything for today. I'm not sure if I'm going to film part two today. I might. So you'll see me in exactly the same setup. I'm not ashamed. But I hope you've enjoyed part one. Stick around for part two in about two weeks time probably. And I will see you then. Bye.